My dear viewer, welcome again to our series of 40 Days of Prayer. Today is day 29 and we are glad that we are in the season of uh, the Holy Spirit. I'm, I'm praying that this Holy Spirit may be moving in your life to lead you and to guide you into issues of salvation. Today, as we join the rest of the world church in this moment of prayer, I want to invite you to think about how the Holy Spirit becomes a saving connection in your life as a Christian. And so this moment, we are talking about a saving connection. Before we get to the text, let's seek the Lord in prayer. Our gracious Father in heaven, we thank you for the privilege of this moment of prayer. We invite you, Lord, as we start, that you can be with us and guide our thoughts as I, sp I speak, and be with us and meet us all at our very point of needs, I pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. My dear viewer, let's go to the text of John chapter 16 and verse number 8. Yesterday we paid attention to verse number 7. Of course, we mentioned verse number 8 a bit, but we are going not to discuss more on verse number 8. And we are also going to consider down up to verse number 11. And allow me to read from my Bible here, the King James Version. The Bible says, And when he has come, he will reprove the world of sin and of righteousness and judgment. Verse number 9, of sin, because they believe not on me. Of righteousness, because I go to my Father, and ye see me no more. And verse 11, of judgment, because the prince of this world is judged. The role of the Holy Spirit, the work of the Holy Spirit, the ministry of the Holy Spirit, is to lead people is to lead people to discover the evil of sin, the role of the Holy Spirit, the reason why it was important for him to come after Christ has departed is because this one was to lead us, convince us, convict us of the issues of righteousness. You see, this text is very, very important that when he comes, he will convict or reproof in the term of King James Version. Convict the world concerning sin and concerning righteousness and concerning judgment. These three are very important in matters of salvation. That we are all sinners. Paul argues and says in Romans that we have all sinned and fall short of the glory of God. None of us is righteous. And the plan of redemption considers that it is important that you as a sinner be ministered by the Holy Spirit. You know, the sacrifice of Jesus on the cross is not complete without the ministry of the Holy Spirit. In fact, yesterday we read a quote from Ellen G. White where she said that the sacrifice of Jesus on the cross avails nothing without the ministry of the Holy Spirit. On page 671 in the, uh, the Discover Ages. And we are appreciating that he has come to convict you, to convict me, to convict the world in the issues of sin. You see, it is the Holy Spirit that speaks to us when we are indulging in sin and, and make that act of sin become undesirable. It becomes, you become uneasy in sin. Now, let me tell you here, if you have been committing certain kind of sins and feeling very uncomfortable in those particular kind of sins, but by and by, gradually, you're becoming comfortable and comfortable with those kind of acts. Then, one thing could be happening here. You have been pushing away the Holy Spirit from your life. So now, you don't have anyone who convinces you and convicts you of those kind of acts as of wickedness. So you're becoming comfortable and comfortable. But whenever you commit sin and you're feeling guilty of your acts, you're feeling bad about what you have done. In fact, it is the presence of the Holy Spirit in your life. It is the ministry of the Holy Spirit that guides you and convicts you of those kind of, you know, things that you're doing. And so it is important that we appreciate the ministry of the Holy Spirit. It is Him who shows us how the righteousness of Christ looks like. 
and it centers, it sent, you know, it takes us to the very heart of Jesus that we may admire his character, we may admire his being, that we may admire being like him. And so we embrace the issues of righteousness. You know, we took a whole week in the season of 10 days, 40 days of prayer discussing about the righteousness. That's the week that has, 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 has ended. And we are looking at the power and the influence and ministry of the Holy Spirit that he is the one who convicts us of righteousness of Jesus. We do not know how to be righteous. We can't have our own righteousness and then we, can, we, we think we can, we can attain salvation. The righteousness that we have is imputed. is the righteousness of Jesus Christ. We are clothed with the garment of righteousness of Jesus. But then who enables us to be there in that garment? It is the Holy Spirit. He convicts us of righteousness of Jesus. And that we may be conscious then of the judgment of God. You see, this free are working together. You know, when he, he convicts us of our sin, then we turn away from our sin and we embrace righteousness. When we embrace righteousness of Jesus, then this righteousness of Jesus qualifies us to sit before the judgment of God without any fear. It is the power of the Holy Spirit in us that gives us confidence to face judgment of God. Without the righteousness of Jesus, we cannot stand before Jesus, before God for, for judgment. But when he, the power of the Holy Spirit, when he, the Holy Spirit, is in us, he convicts us of our sins so that he guides us and leads us to turn away from our wicked ways and embrace the righteousness of Jesus. And that righteousness of, righteousness of Jesus gives us confidence to wait upon the judgment of God, to face the judgment of God. Then it means we have nothing to fear even for the judgment if we shall allow the ministry of the Holy Spirit in our lives. People fear judgment of God. People fear the second coming of Jesus because they are not prepared and you cannot be prepared without the presence of the Holy Spirit. We are emphasizing that just allow the Holy Spirit to work in you. We are praying for the outpouring of the Holy Spirit because he will give us confidence to face judgment. Allow me to end by reading a quote from the best author one more time, Ellen G. White. The book is Act of Apostles, page 49, and I'll read in your hearing. She says this, The promise of the Holy Spirit is not limited to any age or to any race. Very important. Mm. Christ declared that the divine influence of, the, of his spirit was to be with his followers unto the end. From the day of Pentecost to the present day, time, the Comforter has been sent to all who have yielded themselves fully to the Lord and to his service. To all who have accepted Christ as a personal Savior, the Holy Spirit has come as a counselor, sanctifier, guide, and witness. Very, very important that we have such a privilege to be ministered to by the one who has come from above, the one who has come from the Father, the gift of the Father. He who leads us to see our sinful ways and turn away from them to embrace the righteousness of Jesus that we may have confidence facing the judgment of God. He is our counselor. He is our sanctifier. He is our guide and he is our witness. Won't you embrace him? Won't you love him? Won't you surrender your life to him? Won't you wait upon him? Won't you say, God, I allow you to fill me with the power of the Holy Spirit that I may live a sanctified life? Is my prayer. And I pray that it may be your prayer for the seven people you're praying for that you also may commit them and you pray that God may move them through the power of the Holy Spirit. You see, I want you to join me as I join the one church this morning, this afternoon, this evening, wherever you are. One, to pray for the Holy Spirit to work in the lives of the seven people that you are praying for. Number two, to pray for the Holy Spirit to work in any area in your own life. Any area that you feel you're still struggling. Just allow him to work, get in and work in those areas. That needs spiritual healing that you may be healed. Pray that the Holy Spirit would help you love and obey God and his word. We are struggling to appreciate God in our lives and his word. Just allow the power that God has given us, the Holy Spirit, to work in us and in you. Pray that in our eagerness to find creative ways to witness to God and to others, I mean witness for God to others, we won't lose our dependence on Christ. 
his word and his righteousness, his sanctuary service, and his saving power in the great controversy. And lastly, pray for the weak and vulnerable around you, especially for orphans and widows and those enslaved. This is that spe special moment when you pour your heart to the Lord. The best how you know, just this is the moment. Just be before the Lord. Where I am standing here, I shall commit all these concerns before the Lord, together with you, my dear viewer, as you join me in this for the days of prayer, day 29. Let's pray together in faith. Gracious Father in heaven, we thank you for this precious privilege moment that we have. One more time to share and to seek for a saving connection through the power of the Holy Spirit that none of us, as men as we have come to you, shall be left out in this issue of salvation. But we shall all be prepared for the soon coming that we shall be ushered into your kingdom. Lord, this moment we want intentionally to appreciate, to acknowledge the presence of the Holy Spirit in our lives, to pray that he may take charge of our lives, to have his way in our lives. The Lord he shall lead us because he is our counselor, he is our sanctifier, he is our purifier, he is our guide, he is our witness. The Lord he shall work his way in us that we shall be purified and qualified men and women in this age that will be examples of what the sacrifice of Christ can avail in this life. Lord, with all what we have mentioned before you as prayer concerns that have been lifted by the world church, we join them, Lord, and we join the church individually to appeal for the outpouring of the Holy Spirit, to appeal for a committed, renewed interest in the ministry of the Holy Spirit, to appeal for a committed, renewed interest in the word, that as your people, Lord, in this age, we shall be men and women who are guided by your word, and we shall say by the word and the scripture and scripture alone, the Lord, in this age, we shall be found a people standing for truth. We want to commit, Lord, the general conversation one more time before you. Lord, may you reveal yourself through the person of the Holy Spirit in these meetings and appoint for yourself men and women that are going to serve this church and take it to the next level. We want to thank and pray, and especially for the vulnerable, the children, the orphans, many people are struggling, Lord, that through the Holy Spirit you may visit with them and minister to them and push your people, move your people from all corners of the world to be agents of change and agents of help that many who are struggling today may be ministered to through those that you have ministered through the Holy Spirit. Lord, revive us, we pray. Fill us with the Holy Spirit. Give us interest for the things above that we sh truly shall be people who are prepared for the second coming. As we journey on in these 40 days of prayer, we remember the seven-member list that we have. People that we are praying for every single day, my Father. Meet them at a very point of needs. Revive them, Lord. Fill them with the Spirit. Lord, rekindle a fire of revival in their hearts and prepare them as you prepare us for their soon coming is our prayer in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. My dear viewer, God bless you from wherever you're watching this program from. We thank you so much for being part of this ministry. I invite you one more time. If you have not subscribed to our channel, please, I invite you just to click that button, subscribe. If you are not sharing, I want you to request you to share with as many friends as you can. If you're sharing, thank you for those who are sharing. Continue sharing with as many people as you can that we all may be blessed together in this for the days of prayer. Till tomorrow, God be with you.